Hey everyone, so I thought I'd give you an update on the June Power Hub. So, we've made quite a few changes. So if you come over here, Steve. Well, so this is the probably Power Hub 3.0, the third real big um, iteration. So in the May update, I kind of went over it and it hasn't changed since then, but I've been able to do some more testing. So I ended up, um, I've got now I've got two three kilowatt inverters and um, some extra loads, which is going to help me do some proper testing. Um, I've been testing it and I can be, you know, I can run it 500 amps quite easily. Um, it, you can't keep it at 500 amps, but I've done some upgrades. So in the background to fix this. So this bus bar here will be removed. This was just a bit of a temporary kind of see if this will increase its capacity. So it does. So I'm going to be fixing that so it goes in the on the bottom and the fuses are on the top and then these are going to be raised up a little bit to accommodate. Um, in the May update, I mentioned that these weren't quite meeting the output that I needed. So I've kind of rated, these are kind of going around 50 amps continuous they can handle. Now, that's a little bit low for me. I kind of like 60 continuous plus a good margin of safety. So instead of going 30% thicker in the copper, I just went three times thicker and <laughs> basically um, we're not going to have a problem with these uh, heating up too much. And same with uh, these down here. So these, I'm just waiting on the boards now, but they should be, once I've got the boards for this, I should be able to, um, it, it should be running really, really good. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the system. So we've got our kitchen unit here. So got air fryer, coffee machine, two 2000 watt induction hobs. Um, and of course, milk froth around the back. Uh, so I don't know, I'll turn the air fryer on now. And you can kind of see over here, maybe chuck the phone here, Steve. We've got, we're just drawing 128 amps. Um, doesn't even notice it really. You can be drawing quite a lot off it. I've got, so the power hub has, uh, you can have two DC DC chargers connected to it. Um, and you can have three solar controllers or AC controllers. Um, or if you only had one DC DC charger, you can have four, um, solar controllers or AC control uh, AC uh, chargers. Um, you get power in from the start battery uh, and you also just wire in your auxiliary battery bank to it as well. Um, so I've currently got 480 amp hours of lithium in my battery bank consisting of a 250 amp hour battery behind here and then you, know, you can't see it but another 230 in there. Uh, we've got eight constant load outputs uh, rated up to 30 amps. Um, and for those eight, you can only use 100 amps max. Uh, then if you go to the right of it, so Steve, I might get you to zoom right in there. So those eight are just those ones there. Now, these ones here are 125 amp outputs. So we've got four of those. And these ones to the right here, uh, 250 or 300 amp outputs. Currently they're 250, but when these new PCBs arrive, um, I think we'll be able to easily rate these for 300 amps. Um, yeah, I've got, yeah, my inverter, um, uh, 3000 watt inverter there, uh, 20 amp MPPT solar controller there, a 30 amp DC DC charger, um, and I've got some 750 watt um, 5 channel amplifier um, and then if you come down here Steve we've got another 3 kilowatt inverter and two twin air compressors which does 230 amps on its own now those tw two twin air compressors is that far output there that's on a 500 amp relay so I can put out heaps of power haven't got an official rating for that yet, but it's probably around 300 watts, uh, 300 amps, similar to the um, other free outputs. 
Uh, so we got mega fuses on the 300 amp outputs, mini fuses on the 125 amp outputs, mini fuses on the up to 30 amp outputs, and um, maxi fuses on the uh, charging system output. The benefit of the power hub is when you're driving, all of your loads are running off the start battery, not your auxiliary battery. And the purpose of that is, let's say in my situation, I've only got a 30 amp DC DC charger. Well, you know, sometimes I'm on the road, I have charging car batteries or a Makita battery. Um, I've got my USBs charging, my phone. Um, you might have your travel buddy on, for example. Um, and as a result, you end up, you know, you might be drawing like 20 amps. And that 30 amp charger, you know, it's only 30 amps. So net only 10 amps is going into your battery so what we've done is we've got uh big 500 amp relays on the start and auxiliary inputs and if we want if we've got the key in the on position it's running off the start battery if it's um if the key isn't in the on position it's running off the auxiliary battery uh, so you've got those switching uh, we can also link them together by pressing the link button i'll show you that in a minute now because we've got both the start battery and the auxiliary battery on relays, we can basically make our power hub turn on and off based on the state of charge of the battery. So I've got the Victron BMV shunt here and it tells me how much you know current's coming in and out of the battery and also my state of charge. Well if I go to the settings on this and go to the relay, I can turn a relay on um, if it's above uh, 20% state of charge and if it goes below 20% state of charge it turns the relay off. This is just an example of what would happen. So Steve do you want to look up at the lights? So that just turns it off and on and you can kind of hear the relay clicking on and off and the lights turn on and on. So that's um, powering you know turning the turning it on and off. Um, so you can just do it all from your phone. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before uh, on the we've got all of those outputs but we've also got eight switchable outputs now they are on the very top of the power hub up there and we've got um, yeah all up to 30 amps except we've also got a um, uh, that's the switch for the compressors so that's on a 500 amp relay so probably be rated to around 300 amps so Headphone users beware, this would be loud, but. So, that's um, running 250 amps there from my um, air compressors. Um, you know, if I, we can turn the fan on, um, turn on the, you know, just any, like my rear lights here, which are nice amber, which I can also turn into a white light. Um, but you know you've got up to eight switches that you can use um, I'll show you some of the other features so this is the mini hubs so it's really nice to have one central place for all your electronics but what if you've got, you know, like a vehicle, you want some switching in the engine bay and you don't want to run your light bar from all the way back there. So this is what the, this is our mini hubs. So this one right here. So this can be out in the elements. It can, as you can see, I've got mud all over it from full driving, but it's just a um, eight channel switch, uh, sw an eight gang switch, um, switchable, uh, kind of like relays but they're MOSFETs so that's just in there and oh, that powers so if you come in here Steve that's on this switch panel here so you can have this anywhere in your vehicle um, and you can control extra stuff so that's my light bar um, I got my uh, radio here uh, my backup lights and some side lights um, and then this is my link button so if I click that you can hear a relay click and what that does is it connects the start battery and the auxiliary battery together 
so I can um, I can have a flat battery and it will uh, I can link it together and start myself off my lithium batteries in the back but what I use that for is alternator charging so my um, alternator puts out 125 amps and I have that 125 amps going straight to the power hub now I can use DC DC charging uh, but I just go straight off the alternator now a lot of people say that you can't do that and it's it's quite de debatable but in my opinion um, and in my testing I found it perfectly fine to be alternator charging lithiums um, if you've got a quality alternator some of the cheap alternators will, it will stuff them but the factory alternators in the vehicles should be able to do it um, I'll tell you if mine dies but you know you can do a, a bunch of these different things uh, it just gives you options um, I'll show you if you see here we're running at 6.7 amps so actually I'll unlink the batteries uh, and we're running at 3 amps so if I was to turn this vehicle on we can see we can see that it's gone down to your basically very little current um, that current there is just my GPS tracker. I want that to be on my um, lithium batteries and I don't want it to uh, turn off even if I um, uh, even if if the battery is disconnected. So that's that small load there. But that would be zero for most people. Um, and then if we take it, turn it to the off position, yeah, it goes back to um, 3 amps, which is just the LEDs that it's drawing. So yeah, that's basically all of the features of the power hub 3.0 um it's kind of around the first of june at the moment so i'm going i should be getting the new pcbs in the next couple of weeks and i'll be able to do about a month's worth of testing um and yeah by the end of july we're probably looking at launching our first beta product so if anyone wants um to be on that beta product um yeah, feel free to um, hit us up and we'll yeah, put you on it. Um, basically, it's just going to be full retail price, but we will give you a all the upgrade kits. So eventually we want to be able to have uh, switching. So like if I was to turn my high beam on, I want uh, and then have my light bar pressed, then my light bar turns on. But if you turn the high beam off, then your light bar automatically turns off. So at the moment it can't do that, but um, in the future it will, and we'll provide upgrade kits to be able to do that. Um, and we'll also throw in a free, you can have whatever product we release later, later on. So um, you get one free product basically of ours. Uh, so if you've bought the, the first power hub and then you really like the look of the second power hub, you, we can ship that out to you for free. Um, you like the first one and then uh, you know like the seventh version has come along and it's been 10 years later um, and you're about to build a new vehicle you can have the seventh one for free um, so yeah just just to you know support the people that are you know making it possible but yeah that's um that's the update for June I'll let you guys know what's happening in July <laughs>